for some very influential people. I spent this past Christmas with them, and of course the topic of Bloody Island came up, and we talked back and forth about the problem. On January the 31st, a phone call was made between one of my friends and a corresponding friend in Washington, D.C. Um, the following day, their office, which is the Senate Committee on Indian Affairs, contacted us for additional information with exactly what the island was, what the population was, what the school situation was, how many people went back and forth to work. And that was, we reviewed that, and a letter was faxed to them on Tuesday, February 2nd. We were told by them on February 3rd that they had contact with the Lummi Nation and with the Whatcom County Council. They were instructed they expected, number one, the ferry service would not be interrupted. Number two, that there would be a prompt resolution of this problem. Number three, they would be monitoring this and were prepared to sign when the agreement I will take it upon myself <coughs> to thank these people. I am not at freedom because of my respect for their privacy to reveal what their names are. But any of those of you who are familiar with the Washington Post probably already know from what I have told you. But I think we need to be in, informed of that. I did not feel that I could keep that information to myself and that credit needed to be given where credit is due. One more thing, when you ask for money, remember that many of us are senior citizens on a fixed income. For those of you who haven't <laughs> arrived there yet, <laughs> fixed doesn't mean repair. <laughs> <laughs>